Hey guys, it's Amy here and today I'm going to be doing my top 10 of 2014. So in August last year I actually made a top 5 books of the year so far and those 5 books are still in my top 10 so I won't mention everything about them again, if you want to go and watch that video I'll leave a link down below but for the purpose of this video I'll just show you what those books were and then if you want to go and hear my full thoughts on them then the video is down below. So those books were Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins, The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak, Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen, Dust by Hugh Howie, and finally Eleanor and Park by Rainbow Rowell. Okay, so let's move on to the final five books of my top 10 of 2014. These aren't books that came out in 2014, they are ones that I just read in 2014. The first book I want to mention is The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Neffenegger. I actually don't have it with me because I've lent it to my grandparents because I enjoyed it so much. This follows the story of a man who is able to time travel and in so he manages to time travel back into the past and meet his wife when she was six years old and at various points in her life he comes back to her from the future and he knows her in the past and in the future but then she also meets him in her present as she is growing up. A little hard to describe unless you've seen the film or you've read the book because the actual time traveling part was a little hard to get my head round I had to really kind of concentrate on what was going on. At the beginning of each chapter they have the age of him and the age of her so you know kind of whether he's the one going back into the past or whether they're in the present. I just thought this was a really unique story. I've never read anything with time travelling in before so I thought it was absolutely brilliant. Audrey Neffenegger's writing was absolutely beautiful. The style was just something I really enjoyed about the book. I liken it to the book feed. I really enjoyed that. I really thought that the writing was something that really drew me in and that's definitely what I felt with The Time Traveller's Wife. I just didn't want to put it down. I really became attached to the characters. I absolutely cried my heart out by the end it was a really really heart-wrenching story. I definitely recommend this book to anyone who enjoys a romance novel although I would say this isn't your typical romance because it's not the kind of insta love thing going on like it's something that grows for a really long time uh, through their like lives together and it's not all happy days you know bad things happen in the story and it properly ripped my heart out. So I'll leave it there for that one but if you want to know more about my views on that book then please question me down below because I'd love to talk to you about it. Next on my list we have a classic and it is Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie. And this was the first Agatha Christie book I have ever read and I really enjoyed it. I have read two since then. This follows Poirot, the Belgian detective who always seems to be in the right place at the right time when some mysterious murder is happening and then he goes along and helps and miraculously manages to solve the case even though the police are there working on it as well. Poirot is just a really witty character, really funny, always seems to be there saying the right things at the right time, it's just really good. This story in particular takes place on the Orient Express which is a train and as you may have guessed there's a murder on this train and Poirot is thankfully there to save the day and to solve the crime but it's just brilliant the way that he goes through each of the suspects on the case and questions them and comes to the conclusion at the end it's just brilliant. I would highly recommend this to anyone who hasn't read any Agatha Christie yet and wants to start somewhere this was a fun one for me to start with or if you're a hardened Agatha Christie fan and you haven't read this one yet then this is definitely something that should be on your list. This book I actually don't have a copy of as it was a book club book and we got them from the library. It was The Light Between Oceans by M. L. Steadman. Attending a book club is something that has really opened my eyes to different genres and books that I would never usually read and this was definitely one of them. I didn't think I would enjoy this book, it definitely isn't something I would usually pick up, but I thought it was one of the best books I read last year obviously because it's in this video. So this book is set just off the coast of Australia and there is a young couple who live on an island and they tend to a lighthouse. They look after it, make sure it still works all the time, keep logs of everything that happens on the island. Now this young couple is struggling to have babies, they have a few miscarriages, it's absolutely horrible. They're not really having a great time of it, the wife is absolutely devastated that she keeps losing babies and one day mysteriously a boat arrives on the shore of their little island and inside the boat Boat is a dead man but also a tiny baby which is alive. That's not a spoiler by the way, that happens within the first few pages of the book and it's written on the back so I definitely haven't spoiled you there. Basically this is a story of right and wrong and whether these people should be keeping this child. The wife is very keen to keep the child and to hide it from anyone and to make out that it is her baby and not anyone else's. This then leads to a string of really heart-wrenching events, whether they are in the right, whether they are in the wrong, whether they should give up the baby and I won't spoil what happens for you but it's absolutely gripping stuff and I was left questioning what I think is 
right and wrong and whether these people were right in what they were doing and it's just absolutely brilliant. I would highly recommend to anyone who loves a good gripping story and would possibly want to question their morals and beliefs on things because it fully flipped my head around. The fourth book I've chosen for this video is a YA dystopian which is unusual for me because I'm not the biggest fan of many YA dystopians but this one I read this year and actually thought it was brilliant and it is The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. I was sent this by Bloomsbury to review and I thought it was fantastic. So this follows the story of a young girl called Kestrel whose father is high up in the military forces that govern the land that she lives in. So I'd say that the genre of this book is kind of historical YA fantasy sci-fi type thing. A lot of stuff that goes on in this book, a bit of romance as well which is actually an aspect of the book I did enjoy which is surprising because I'm not a big fan of romance. So Kestrel is a young girl and one day she's out in the market with her friend and pays an extortionate amount for a slave which then sparks a lot of kind of confusion and suspicion amongst the people in her area because they don't know why she's paid so much for this slave so as Kestrel and this slave Aaron become closer she struggles with her feelings as society deems him to be an inferior and she doesn't know why and she wants to question that and it sparks off this massive series of events of her struggling with her feelings and her friends and her family and this war and it's just mental and by the end of it it was just so gripping I got to the end and was like oh no when's the next one coming out and I don't even know when the next one's coming out definitely this year I think so I need to get my hands on it because I just I need to know what happens next one thing I really enjoyed about this book was Kestrel and her character. I thought she was a really strong female character, kind of like Katniss from The Hunger Games and Triss from Divergent. I really love these power strong women who kind of make a really good stand in the novel. A really fast paced book. The story really dragged me in and I think I read it all in one sitting just because I wanted to know what was going on next. Also if you're not a massive fan of insta love in YA novels then this is a good one because it takes a while to kind of build up to the love and the characters are really struggling with the decisions making and I think it's really good and actually a lot more realistic than a lot of YA dystopians I've read so I'd highly recommend that one and finally the last book in this video and probably the one I most enjoyed this year it was just brilliant and that is a Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I watched all four series of the TV show in the summer with my boyfriend and we absolutely love them. So as the book had been sitting on my shelf for probably about a year and a half, I thought I'd better get on and actually start reading it. And to my pleasant surprise, the TV show follows so closely to the book. I thought it was brilliant. I love the way they've adapted the book and the story and the characters and it's absolutely fantastic. If you don't know about A Game of Thrones yet, then maybe you were like me, living under a rock for a while. I'd highly suggest you get out and pick up one of these books or maybe just watch the TV show because both are fantastic. This follows so many storylines I don't think I can even describe to you all of them all at once but basically it's about lots of people all trying to become the king or the queen and lots of different races of people lots of different types of characters female male young old it's just so good there's just so much to follow and i just thought it was brilliant one thing that slightly annoyed me was the fact that sometimes you would have to wait quite a few chapters to get to someone you really enjoyed again there weren't any characters that i really disliked reading about but some of their storylines were just a little bit less exciting than some of the other ones and i just wanted to kind of get through it as quickly as possible so i could join into a storyline that i was really enjoying again the characters in this novel are witty and sneaky and honest and kind and horrible and there's just so many and so much that happens that you almost just have to read it to understand the complexity and the world building that George R. R. Martin has done. I mean, as a hardened Tolkien fan, this is just up my street. Totally my kind of story. Extensive world building, extensive storylines on many people. And I cannot wait to carry on with the next book. Definitely this year. And I can't wait for April to come for the fifth season of the TV show because I'm just so excited. So there you go. There's my final top book of 2014. So please let me know down below what your top books of the year were because I'd love to, if I haven't read them already, put them down on my list and have them as recommendations for future books to buy. If you've read any of the books that I enjoyed this year then please let me know what your thoughts are down below. As always I will leave links to everything down below, Goodreads, Tumblr, Twitter, everything. I've really been enjoying Tumblr and Instagram at the moment so I'll leave those links at the top if you want to go and follow me. I've been posting so many pictures and I absolutely love it. I hope you're all having a fantastic start to 2015 and I will see you soon. Bye!
to the book haul. So I've got 13 books to show you today. I'm not going to speak at length about them as I haven't read them yet. So let's get on to the first five, which are ones that I've bought myself. Firstly, we have We Are All Completely Beside Ourselves 